my name is Ellen Hewlett and I'm a solutions engineer with MariaDB. Today we're going to go over how to install enterprise server onto a command line interface. So today we're going to be using a CentOS 7 machine. There is obviously many, many other options for this. They're all fairly similar and all covered in the doc slash deploy on MariaDB.com. So the first thing we want to do for this installation is make sure that we have wget or the like to help us out with getting those repository setup files off of mariadb.com. When we install wget, we are going to be able to run the wget command to mariadb and that helps us get those repository setup files onto this machine. Once that's done, we are going to echo that statement to ensure that we Got those repository setup files coming over cleanly and well and we're going to get an okay response from that echo if that is what what occurred um, we did get an okay response as you can see so next thing we're going to do is chmod those repository setup files this is basically just going to make them executable and this is a very important step because you're going to need them to be executable to install via those um, the next thing we're going to do is run the repo setup and that means that we're going to have the customer token, which you can find on MariaDB.com, and we're also going to specify the server version. So today we're going to install 10.5. We have our customer token here, as you can see, and we're able to write those files to our ETC folder. Now, as we go along, we are all the way done. We're ready to install now. We have our repository here, and we are ready to install. The installation is very easy, Sudium install MariaDB server, and we're going to also install MariaDB backup today as well. We do recommend that you install MariaDB backup along with your server. Um, it is very important in many processes along the way, but we're going to most explicitly install MariaDB server today, and we specified the server version in those repository sub files, so we are installing 10.5. You run that command and it will run through everything that needs to do. It will install server, backup, a bunch of dependencies, and give you a complete or not complete. Today we have complete and we are completely installed here on the server. Okay, so the next thing we're going to want to do is configure this MariaDB installation. So we can do that by going to our etc etc um, directory and my um, directory as well. So we have a bunch of options here. You can um, edit all of these all of these configuration files for different uses. Today we're going to look into the server.com file. We can see that there's Galera settings in here. We could edit bind address. We could edit ports in here. There is also a section for MariaDB specific options as you see here at the bottom. We are going to add our different configurations into this file, but before you do that, we, uh, we absolutely recommend that you do a copy of this file and you use your own custom configuration file. You can copy the file and just give it a new name and we really recommend that you use something that starts with Z because the um, order of the files taken is going to go down and find that last and take that in front of the original file. So you need to make a new custom configuration file and name that um, z.mycnf.conf, something like that. Um, and you're going to be able to then take all of those changes that you want to make and put them in that file and those will be populated on your database instance. So far we have installed Enterprise Server on our machine. We have made some changes to those custom configuration files and we are ready to start up the server. We're going to be able to do that with a very simple command. It's sudo systemctl start MariaDB. This goes ahead and starts up the server, starts up the database instance, and makes sure that everything is functional. We can check that that is started up by doing sudo, sudo systemctl status MariaDB. And here in this, we can see that we are active, how long we've been running for, and we can also see the last few lines of code from those startup logs. If we were not successful in starting up the server, we would see an inactive status, we would see how long it's been inactive for, and we would see some log reasons at the end there to help us debug. So we are active and we are started up, so we can go ahead and log in. Here we are using a very simple command to log in, just sudo MariaDB. We are also able to use hostname, port, username, a bunch of different variables in our login string to make that easier for us as well. 
but we see that we can log in. At this point, we are installed, configured, and logged into our MariaDB instance. We are able to go ahead and start making users, making tables, testing around in this MariaDB instance.